Well, thank you very much, Holger, and uh, congratulations on uh, your success. And it will increase the visibility of TIA, as it should. And uh, well done to all those that uh, achieved what would be considerable efforts in getting uh, that recognition. Can I acknowledge uh, my parliamentary colleague, uh, Shane Broad, the Shadow Minister for Prime Ministries and Water, and um, someone I would know a lot about, um, TIA. Uh, so, Welcome, Shane. Can I acknowledge all the farms in the room, the researchers? Can I acknowledge also the staff at Forthside here and it's looking at the picture, um, as it usually is? So, uh, Mark, uh, team, uh, well done to you all. Uh, it's my pleasure today just to say a few words, and Sue, I won't go over time with my 10 minutes, uh, but to firstly acknowledge and uh, open the day, uh, but also launch uh, the white paper. I'll come to that in just a moment. Uh, as you know, and many of the, I can see the audience uh, would have heard me speak on occasions before, uh, most recently at the uh, Tasmanian Agricultural Productivity Annual Day, we've set some very ambitious targets uh, for agriculture in this state. And very pleased to say that the recent release of the Tasmanian Agri-Food Scorecard of 2015-16 uh, shows that we are well and truly uh, on target uh, to meet that projected growth in agriculture. In fact, gross value of Tasmania's agriculture and seafood sectors uh, increased by some 5.9% in the 15-16 financial year and indeed uh, during this period, agriculture, uh, its value was $1.48 billion at Farmgate uh, for the state of Tasmania, it growing 3.3%. This is a significant achievement uh, for your sector. And I talk about your sector because the farmers, obviously, uh, quite clearly, are crucial to that, but so are the researchers and the, those that collaborate with the farmers as well. Very challenging times, drought, uh, floods, uh, during that period of time, so well done uh, to you all. And it is clearly an outstanding commendation of the Tasmanian production and processing agriculture and agribusiness sectors, so well done. We need world-class organisations such as the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, and we are very, very lucky. And we need organisations such as TIA uh, working with the private sector uh, and government uh, to ensure Tasmanian agriculture can achieve, of course, its full potential. Today is about showcasing those partnerships and the research talent of the TIA staff, of course, I which you'd be very proud of, who work right across the state on a range of projects in conjunction with the agribusiness sector. The industrial hemp research undertaken by TIA in partnership with Echo Fibre is a clear demonstration that the establishment of standalone legislation, together with its associated reduction in red tape, has paved the way for this pledging industry to become another mainstream enterprise option for Tasmanian farmers, and the growth projections there are quite extraordinary. In February this year, I stood here at the Industrial Hemp Field Day and forum, it was February, I think, this year, uh, and said, uh, not if, uh, but when foods derived from industrial hemp seed were allowed for human consumption, this would provide the catalyst for real growth in the industrial hemp sector. After many years of persistent lobbying, uh, I am delighted to say that just two days ago, in fact, industrial hemp seed products became legal to consumers' food in Australia uh, and New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, a lot of effort uh, went to that from a lot of people, and I congratulate you all. Uh, particularly, I can see Tim Smith up the, the back there from the Industrial Hemp Association. And Tim, I note your comments a few days ago. The popping industry, average yields have almost doubled in the past five years, notwithstanding, of course, a significant reduction in the area contracted, and we all know the reason uh, for that. But our market share worldwide uh, remains around 50%. Decisive and insightful research into systemic downy mildew has been led by the team of working in partnership with the poppy companies. This is a great example of collaboration. Poppy Growers Tasmania and the government. Uh, Jason Scott, of course, will talk more about this later in today's program, but I want to take note now 
uh, this is a prime example of how people working together collaboratively uh, can take an industry forward, particularly when it comes to considerable uh, challenges. And I men uh, mentioned drought and floods and I've got dairy prices and uh, the down at Yilju happened at that time as well, so it just highlights the resilience of our agricultural sector. The white paper. Uh, as many of you would be aware, during 2017, uh, we undertook, the uh, government that was, um, working with TIA and industry to undertake a review of research, development and extension to make sure that we're positioned uh, to maximise our potential. And we have the white paper uh, here, and there's some copies I'll leave uh, for your consumption um, if you're interested a bit later on. And in May this year, I launched uh, a first for Tasmania, in fact, the government's green paper review into Tasmania's agricultural research, development and extension. And this process was in part uh, prompted uh, by farmers and agribusinesses themselves who came to government, to me, seeking to actively participate in developing strategies for achieving productivity improvements in agriculture to attain our shared growth targets. And I acknowledge they're very constructive involvement and input in that process. Indeed, just two years ago, I led an agribusiness delegation to New Zealand to form new partnerships between the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, University of Tasmania and Lincoln University and explore potential opportunities there. And I'm very pleased today to release our white paper for agriculture, RDNE. Our white paper on growing Tasmanian agriculture, research, development and extension for 2050 forms the blueprint for achieving the productivity improvements required for growing the value of Tasmanian agriculture tenfold to that $10 billion target at Farmgate by 2050. The white paper has been developed, developed in conjunction with TIA, businesses, stakeholders and researchers around the state to ensure that we have the right priorities and the right delivery model uh, for its RD and e services in Tassie well into the future. And of course, whether that's investing in the right research programs or making a better use of research farm assets. The stakeholder feedback was very clear. Tasmania has a sound framework for RDE, led by a world class Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. And there is considerable support for making it better through being more responsive to industry needs, contemporary challenges, and potential private sector partners. The white paper sets out a future directions in four broad areas. One, measures to increase the sustainable growth and productivity of Tasmanian agriculture and food sectors. Two, connecting industry and our public provider, TIA. Three, maximising the use of our research farm capacity. And four, improved evaluation of impact and performance. And the white paper provides a pathway for more industry relevant research and partnerships with the private sector. Specific highlights include investment principles and a new five year research and development investment strategy to prioritise our RDNE across areas of industry, development, capacity building, innovation, and international linkages. New annual reporting on a range of standard performance and impact metrics on the effectiveness of rt &E activities in supporting Tasmanian agriculture and food producers. An agricultural innovation fund to address emerging opportunities for issues such as the Downing Mills issue that uh, we came across just a few years ago by surprise. And increasing our rt &E capacity in biosecurity risk a new pilot agricultural graduate inter internship partnership program and a new extension outreach program. Industry advisory groups will be formalised within TIA and of course at the end a research farm portfolio plan. So over the past three years TIA has worked with a number of industry partners to identify and demonstrate the potential of precision agriculture as well and associated digital technologies that will help transform uh, Tasmanian agriculture. I mentioned the partnership, or mentioned the Tasmanian Agricultural Productivity Group, and I acknowledge that partnership, and I was pleased to originally announce uh, further four years funding for the TAPG to continue with their annual Precision Agriculture Expo. These technologies offer numerous opportunities, including increasing accuracy of machinery operation, streamlining data collection, and the replacement of human labour for repetitive tasks. 
As we know, with our personal devices, digital technologies are evolving so rapidly, and it's important for farmers to understand what is available and the rewards offered through planned early adoption of new technologies. Today's guest speakers, Shelby Shane, I hope I've got that right, Tim Newell, uh, will be sharing with us some of the latest ideas and opportunities to help uh, businesses to adapt and, of course, uh, prosper. Uh, they were just my few words, so I hope I haven't um, gone on too long. I know it's a little dry. Um, most of my tea speeches are a little dry, I just say, a bit of technical. Uh, but that's a great document, um, and it is uh, full of collaboration uh, between government. Uh, between TIA, uh, between agribusinesses and the room and key stakeholders, between farmers who work together on this. Uh, I hope this is a really strong signal. I know Shane, the Shadow Minister, would agree with me on this because he speaks about science and technology a lot in the Parliament. Uh, that our DNA is crucial uh, for Tasmania's agricultural future. Sometimes it's not what farmers really like to hear too much, they're too busy trying to make a buck and improve their gross margins. Uh, but uh, when you think how far we've come even in the last decade uh, through adoption of new technologies, machinery, through research and development, what it's done for our productivity on farm, you know, if you think back uh, just a decade, you really realise that uh, enormous improvements can be made in a very, very short time. That's why it's crucial uh, to invest in organisations such as TIA uh, to be at these sort of field days, to quickly uptake uh, as much as possible and encourage our farmers and agriculturalists to uptake the technology uh, as simply as possible and to communicate that as well and to ensure that our RDE uh, is applied uh, to the future growth uh, targets of Tasmania and our key industries. Uh, so for those few words, could I officially launch the paper holder, congratulate you and your uh, wonderful team at TIA, uh, and also thank my department for the work they've done in this, and I acknowledge Robert Thompson from Agro Growth here as well, and officially declare the day open. Thank you very much.